On this episode, we finally get under the hood of our NX2000. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project NX 2K. That's our 1993 Nissan NX 2000 that you see over my shoulder. Today's episode, guys, we're gonna start addressing some maintenance issues. The first one, pulling that aftermarket cruise control unit out. Uh, I'm not a big fan of units like that. They kind of take up a lot of space in the engine bay and potentially could fail in the future, plus weight reduction. Also, the valve cover gasket is absolutely pouring oil over the entire engine and underneath the car. We got to address that, so that valve cover is coming off and we're going to replace that gasket. Let's get in the garage, get a little dirty. Before we even jump into under hood maintenance, we're going to get rid of this aftermarket cruise control system. Not a big fan of add-ons like this. It takes up more space in the engine bay and I'm never going to use it, so I'm just going to remove it, unclutter it a bit in here. I've never done one of these, so we'll see how involved this is, but let's get this thing out of here. Looks like a pretty simple bracket holding it in. Obviously have a throttle cable attachment going to where the other throttle cable attaches, so I'm gonna see how that's rigged up and try to get that out of there. An electrical harness going through the firewall, that's probably gonna go to that switch. We've got a ground here that we've already done. And there is a T off of the brake booster, which is something we gotta remember to either replace that with a vacuum connector straight through or get a cap on there because we don't want to leave that open. That would be a pretty bad vacuum leak and probably one of the worst places you can have one. So we'll just pull that vacuum for now. And now I just need to undo the interior. So let's do that. Here's what the cruise control looks like on the interior. This panel should just pop off. It actually looks pretty period correct, so it's probably an older unit. This is going to be the back side of that wiring harness, so I'm going to need to get that out of there to pull it through the firewall. But actually, let's just see. we got two screws here. We'll have to see which side's easier to pull through the firewall. Sometimes these little jobs grow into little monsters. So I pulled this backing plate off of our cruise control there. Disconnected these two cables. Now I have to run these cables back through the firewall, get it all sorted on the interior. Uh, of course, there's a power source I had to find. Disconnected that and the ground. So now I should be able to just clear this up. This is now disconnected. We can move this. On the inside of our NX2000, I found the plug where that goes into another harness. Pulled the wires through the firewall. Already got those out of here. Now it's just time for this final cruise control cable. And this should come right through here. You know what? I'm probably gonna have to pop out this blanking plate so I was able to remove this blinking plate right here that they drilled through, pulled the whole AC unit and its connector up through. And there's that aftermarket cruise control removed from the NX2000. What a monster. Now when you're dealing with a car with some wet, leaky oil underneath, try to find the source, guys. Don't always start at like an oil pan or something like that because seldom do oil leaks go up the engine block unless your car spends a good amount of time upside down, which it probably shouldn't. But I want to show you guys something here. You come down, you can see oil there, just south of the valve cover. That's your sign. And it's not just in the front, guys. It's going down the side. Uh, there's residue where it kind of sprays up there. And you come around the rear of the block, it's the same kind of deal back here. So we have a real bad valve cover gasket here. And that's how you're going to find that out. Uh, definitely down the side here. Uh, under that timing cover, where the timing chain is, it's probably a little oily too. Sometimes it can run down there or the cam seals, but bad valve cover gasket. So we're gonna get that out of there, these plugs and wires, who knows how long they've been in there. Time to change those out, but we've got work to do. But let's start off with this valve cover gasket. And even before we pull the valve cover off, guys, I'm gonna clean under here. You know how I am. I just hate getting covered in grease and oil every time I'm doing something small under the hood. So let's thoroughly clean this and underneath as well. Let's get really dirty. Time to get our leaky valve cover gasket out of there. First thing, we'll pull off the cover for the distributor here. And then I'm going to pull each spark plug. I'll just go ahead and number them. We will be doing plugs and wires, so just to keep me straight. And 
And that looks like everything attached to the valve cover. Uh, we'll have to angle it obviously to pull this little section of hose off, but let's go ahead and loosen those 10 millimeter bolts that are all over this. It looks like there's going to be quite a few of them. It's been quite a while since this valve cover has been changed and it's really on there hard. You want to give it some nice soft mallet hits. Nothing too hard. These are rubber mallet obviously. This is thin aluminum. There we go. Once it starts rocking, we're in a good spot. Okay, I actually disconnected this little hose here to get that out of the way. I was having some clearance issues right here. This should allow me to put a little wire clamp here we need to get off. My God, come on valve cover. Making this a challenge for me today. Oh my God, look at the old gasket just sticking to it. Yep, you could just stay there. Yeah, we got our half moon section on the sides of the cam. These are, jeez. Yeah, this is a very old gasket. Out it goes. We'll tidy up here a little bit. Uh, a little darker than I usually like to see under here. Probably been a while since had some oil changes, so we'll get up, maybe clean a little bit. Timing chain looks really good. Put a lot of RTV. They put RTV around the entire thing, which it's on you guys if you want to use RTV. I'm a big advocate of just doing it over like the cams in the corners where you tend to see leaks, but you don't, you know, you don't want to put too much. Now they went super hard on the RTV, which you can see around the entire valve cover gasket. I mean, just look at that. Now you might think you're doing the right thing by using RTV, and I do use a little bit over those cams right there, but boy, they went hard. The entire perimeter of this valve cover gasket is covered in RTV. So what you think you're doing something good, it can actually introduce leaks as that RTV does dry up over time. Much better to have a valve cover gasket torqued down with the valve cover correctly. Now, if you do experience an over application of RTV when you're doing a valve cover, don't use something too sharp. You can use a razor blade if you're very careful. I like to use a plastic razor blade so I don't nick the ceiling surface here. And make sure none of this RTV kind of falls into there. You want to keep that clean in there, obviously. But try to get all that up. You want a clean mating surface when you go to put that new valve cover gasket in. So it sure takes a while, but you want your mating surface to basically look like that. And we had a lot of RTV to go through, but you want to get it down to the metal, nice and smooth, ready to receive that new valve cover gasket. Time to work over this SR20 valve cover, make it look a little more decent than what we have right here. Before we press the valve cover in, it's good to pull these rings out and replace them. If they're hard, they can be kind of a bear to get out of here. You want to kind of use a hook, kind of hook it up, pull them up. They do get hard and plasticky. These are pretty hard, not as bad as the actual rubber grommets that were on top, but you want to be careful not to mess up the, the mating surface there. So I kind of just poke them in and then kind of lift. Ooh, yeah, they're stuck in there good. Go ahead and pull all four of those out and replace them with your new valve cover gasket kit. There's also a little rubber one right here, smaller than the four spark plug ones. What I did want to point out is if you are getting oil one day when you go to do your spark plugs, you see oil sitting on your spark plugs, good chance these little O-rings have failed. Start there before you panic about your engine. Or panic, that can be fun too. Got our new kit here with all the good gaskets we're gonna need, the O-rings. Go ahead and press it down into that channel all over. Make sure you have, a, have it lined up right. Make sure there's no defects. You're looking for little pinches, imperfections because if you find them now, it saves you installing it and seeing all that oil come right back out. And that's it from this end, guys. Valve cover gasket is in place, ready to be installed back on the vehicle. Now it's time to apply a little ultra great RTV to our valve cover area where we're gonna be placing down the new gasket. Again, I only like to put it down in these areas that go around the cam sections and over here where it goes over, definitely over here where that small half moon goes, and then in the corners. 
I think that's all you need to do. And don't go overboard. You definitely don't want any of that falling inside your valve train. So just go ahead and smear it on there sparingly with your fingers. You don't need to do the whole perimeter like a previous person did. Now it's time for my least favorite part, putting that valve cover back on. Hopefully everything lines up. Actually, I had to pull off a little hose in the back here that was kind of fouling as it went down, so that made life a lot easier. Probably should have taken that when I took it out. Now we just got to kind of massage everything into its right home. All you need to do now is put those nuts down in the rubber grommets with brass caps, tighten them to spec all the way around the valve cover. I like to start from the middle, work my way out. Having just snugged everything down, it's time to torque everything to spec. You like to snug down first, just in case they're gonna get caught up or they're not tightened all the way. Now it's time to tighten to seven foot-pounds of torque, guys, that's it. So get your handy dandy, I've got a 3 8 inch snap-on old clicker style, and you're gonna go ahead, again, starting with the middle. And you're gonna do that for all of your bolts. So go ahead and work your way out. As far as the valve cover gasket goes, looking good. That should stop our waterfall of oil leaking over an entire block.